to keep the king's commandment and that in regard of the oath of God. Be not hasty to go out of his sight. Stand not in an evil thing, for he doeth whatsoever pleaseth him. Where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, What doest thou? Whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing, and a wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment. Because to every purpose there is time and judgment, therefore the misery of a man is great upon him. For he knoweth not that which shall be, for who can tell him when it shall be? There is no man that hath power over the spirit to retain the spirit, neither hath he power in the day of death. And there is no discharge in that war, neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. All this I have seen and applied my heart unto every work that is done under the sun. There is a time wherein one man ruleth over another to his own hurt. And so I saw the wicked buried, who had come and gone from the pl place of the holy, and they were forgotten in the city where they had so done. This is also vanity. Because the sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times in his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God which fear before him. But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before God. There is a vanity which is done up upon the earth, that there, that there be just men unto whom it happeneth according to the work of the wicked. Again, there be wicked men to whom it happeneth according to the work of the righteous. I said that this also is vanity. Then I commended myrrh because a man hath no better thing under the sun than to eat and to drink and to be merry, for that shall abide with him of his labor the days of his life, which God giveth under the sun. When I applied mine heart to know wisdom and to see the busyness that is done upon the earth, for also there is that neither day nor night seeth sleep with his eyes. Then I beheld all the work of God that a man cannot find out of the work that is done under the sun, because though a man labor to seek it out, yet he shall not find it. Yea, farther, though a wise man think to know it, yet shall he not be able to find it. Amen. That's a good word by Solomon. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, Brother John, you want to pray for us tonight? Yes, Lord. Storming out there, y'all. I was kind of out of it for a little while, then I saw y'all smiling faces. I thought you'd be feeling pretty good. Thank y'all. Grab your song book, turn to page 381. Stand, we're going to sing. Stand up for Jesus. 381. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army he shall Be never wanted. 
fellowship with somebody, Reverend La Hope Well. <laughs> Over in the books of Moses, the strangest thing I found about this man called Pharaoh. He brought plagues all over town. He was very hard and he disobeyed the things that God had said. 
So the Lord sing, please, flies and frogs and turn the water to bloody red. Moses said to Pharaoh, won't you let my people go? Pharaoh said to Moses, now you know we can't be slow. Won't you come back in the morning, take a journey with your one and all. But today I just can't give them up. I want one more night with the frogs. One more night with them stinking frogs. One more night in sin. I had a terrible time with them last night. I just gotta do it again. This may always be a puzzle to me, but I reckon it's all because he could have had sleep. Rest and peace, which was one more night with a frog. Now we find here a lot of people like the one in Egypt land. Go stacking, slipping, and sliding. Doing all they can to stand Holding on to some little old sin That don't matter to a thing at all But they're gonna give it up tomorrow I want one more night with the frogs One more night with them stinking frogs One more night in sin I had a terrible time with them last night I just gotta do it again this may always be a puzzle to me, but I reckon it's all because he could have had sleep, rest and peace, which was one more night with a frog. Mason's trying to get that thing tuned up. I told him I'll go in and hold that thing in position while he's playing that he won't see. Then he then he slapped that capo on it, capo on it, and that sealed the deal. <clears throat> all right, y'all. Um good to see y'all this evening. Um we're gonna look at uh got the Bible turned to Numbers chapter twenty twenty, verse twelve. Numbers 20, verse 12. Um, you know, Moses was a great man, but sometimes he just, but, you know, I mean, yeah, I guess he messed up about his wife, about uh, his son, by uh, not circumcising when he's supposed to and, and striking a rock. But Moses, all in all, Moses was pretty good. God didn't even punish him for killing that guy, you know what I mean? But Moses was a pretty good fellow all in all. But he, but <clears throat> you know, just like us, we we all tend to mess up somewhere down the road. No matter how good you are or think you are, sometimes you're gonna you're gonna mess up somewhere down the road. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, y'all. Dear Lord Jesus, heaven and Father, Lord, thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for your grace and your mercy on us, Lord. And Lord, you've been so good to us, Lord. You forgive me for my shortcomings, Lord, the times I failed you, Lord. Jesus, not reading and studying where I'm supposed to, Lord. And just help us all tonight, Lord Jesus. Bless them folks up there in the mountains at their camp, Lord. Just keep them all safe and let them get something out of it, Lord. Pray that all of them get saved up there, Lord. And just help us right here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, anyway, um, Moses in um, Moses chapter, I mean Numbers chapter 20, I guess we started in verse 12 is kind of our text verse, but we'll start at verse 8. It said, Take the rod, and, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod, and gather the, and gather thou the assembly together, thou and, the, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock, uh, the rock before thy eyes, and it shall give forth his water. <clears throat> the rock said, he, even put that, he made that rock masculine. You know what I mean? He said, Give forth his water. Uh, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock, so thou shalt give the congregation and their uh, beasts drink. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him, and Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock, and he said unto them, Hear, ye, hear now ye rebels, uh, must we fetch you, fetch you water out of this rock. And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod, he smote the rock twice, and the water came out abundantly. And the congregation drank, and, and, their, blessed, and their beasts also. 
And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, because ye believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given you. He said, because ye believe me, believe me not. Um, like I said, Moses, he, he, you know, he's a pretty good fellow all in all. Um, um, because Moses didn't believe God, he, um, God, he was the only, only to speak to the rock. Uh, you know, he, did, he didn't. He didn't sanctify the. It didn't set. It didn't set God apart. You know what I mean? Um, that's what that sanctifying is. He said, "I ain't." He ain't like any other, any other God. Um, uh, it didn't. It didn't give God the glory when he when he did that right there. Um, uh, it didn't set part God apart. I mean, I know he they smote it one time, but God didn't want to do it that do it away this time. Um, to sanctify to sanctify God to praise and to celebrate Him as a holy being. Uh, to acknowledge and honor his holy majesty. That's what he, you don't treat God like you do anything else. He's separate, he's different than, than any other so-called God. Um, it's supposed to reverence his, his, his character, reverence his, his laws. Um, if, if Moses obeyed God, everybody would have been happy. God would have been happy, Moses would have been happy. Um, everybody would have looked at Moses like you're a great leader, um, and God, and God would have got all the glory. Basically, that's what it all comes down to, God getting the glory in this right here. One thing that led up to uh, Moses not giving God the glory um, is uh, in verse 10, it says, and Moses, and Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock and said unto them, Hear, ye, hear now, ye rebels, um, must ye fetch, must we fetch you water out of this rock? Uh, Moses, had, Moses was upset. Uh, you could tell he was upset because his, his tone, his tone of voice has changed. Right? He called them some rebels. You know, we, I mean, I guess Southern rebels is all right. <laughs> but I guess, you know, most of the time that, that rebel is in, in, a, in a bad light. And these guys, and that basically what, what they, they, these folks were, the congregation were like, were, were, were rebelling. And that's what that, that what Mary Beth, that, that rock, that area, that's what, that's, that's what that, that meaning of that is quarrel and conflict. And that's what was going on right there. Um, Moses, Moses has been dealing with these people for a while. Um, you know, and it, you know, it's hard dealing with folks. I mean, dealing with folks. I mean, you ever had to, you ever had to deal with some goats? A goat is tough to deal with sometimes. Hard, the folks about, about as worse as a goat to deal with. It's hard dealing with folks sometimes. Hey, God. Hey, God called them a stiff-necked people. Um, what I gather from this part of the scripture is, is you don't let someone else cause you to sin. And that's basically what this. Moses got upset with them, and it caused him to sin. Um, I mean, we got we got enough. Of, I got I got enough problems on my own than, than somebody else than, than dealing with somebody else. Uh, no matter how upset we um, we are, the glory goes to God. Hey, this is this is um, this is this this glory. It ain't it ain't shared. God don't share His glory with nobody. I mean, I understand when we get to get to heaven. You know, you know. Uh, I think some scriptures mention something about sharing sharing the glory. But hey, that ain't it ain't now. It ain't right now. Um, what, ha what happens when, when one takes God, God's glory? Hey, God, God will withhold a blessing from you. If, if you just try to take his glory from you, God's holding a blessing from you. And that's what happened. This is an example, God. That's what happened to Moses right here. God took the blessing from him. Moses was looking forward to taking the folks into the, uh, the, the Canaan land. Um, and, um, we, we know that that rock was a, we know that, you know, when we look at that rock, you know, we, I mentioned earlier that rock was, uh, he said, made him in a, a masculine form. That rock was, it was like a person, a type of Christ. And, um, and it's just showing, I know y'all already know about it, just showing that, that Jesus Christ ain't going to be smoked, ain't going to be put to death but one time. Ain't gonna be, you ain't, hey, ain't got to keep beating on him, beating on him, uh, uh, striking him and striking him. One time is all he needs for salvation. All he had to do was die once. Um, Hey, don't let don't let the world distract you from giving God the glory. Hey Moses, hey, Moses basically lost his cool. He just got out of control. When he, I, 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 I've lost my cool in front of folks, and just and you have you have a hard time showing Christianity, showing God when you lose your cool. Um, Proverbs fourteen seventeen says, "He that is soon angry, angry dealeth foolishly," and that's what happened right there. And a man of wicked devices is hated. Isaiah twenty three twenty six three. Um, thou would keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Hey, his, his, 
Moses' mind got off of God and got on the congregation uh, trying to deal with them folks because he trusted in thee. And Moses got his eyes off God and he got his eyes on the congregation. Um, Like losing your, hey, I know the, um, we think that just because we lose our cool sometimes that, I mean, it's all right. But really, there ain't no excuse for it. I mean, God is, God is, 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 is pushing for perfection in us. I mean, real, I mean, basically, even though we mess up, we're still supposed to handle the situation. I mean, I think God, I think God is expecting us to either to, to handle what we're going through. Um, that's, a, that's just a, that's a problem we got. And all Satan, all Satan wants to do is upset a follower of God. His, all, all, his intent is to, is to upset, to, to get you to fail, to get you to look bad in the eyes of the world. I mean, just like when, when, uh, when Israel came out there and came out, was going out, was going into the, um, in the wilderness and had to deal with all these other nations, and God just, uh, uh, Moses would tell God, because they're going to look at, the, you got you to bless us because they're going to look at you as being bad. I mean, the idea is that God looked good in this situation, in, in all things. Us Christians, Christians, being Christ-like, uh, to look good in front of God, in front of all the world. Um, you know, but Satan seemed to got the, got, seemed that he got the best of Moses this time. The, the idea is to, is to learn from Moses' mistakes. You know, so this whole Bible is for uh, our admonition. Um, it might not seem like a big deal, but, but it's a big deal to God. Uh, he, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 10, 10, 11 says, Now all these things were happened unto them for example. And this stuff happened to them so we could learn some, something from it. Uh, they were written for our admonition. You know, basically, so we would learn not to, not to disrespect God. So we would learn to fear God. So we won't have to suffer or be, or be denied a blessing. We all want to get, we all want a blessing. Everybody wants a blessing. I like, I like to have a blessing. Um, Moses was to be, um, Moses was to, I mentioned earlier, Moses was to be the one to take him into the, the Canaan land, that land of Canaan. He was, he was supposed to be the one, but he missed out on that right there. And you know, and sometimes we miss out on some, some blessings because of some, just some foolish things we do. And, you, and a lot of times you don't realize it until after you've done it, you've messed up, and then, oh, I shouldn't have done that. And, and I wonder what God would have done if I hadn't have done this right here. I mean, it's always a if I hadn't have done this right here. Hey, Moses, Moses, he spoke to the people and smoked the rock. Moses probably should have spoken to the rock and smoked the people. That's about what, that's about what probably should have happened in this instance right here. Hey, start, start, start whooping up on some of them folks right there. Um, hey, Moses, he had no problem obeying, obeying God in the past. You know, in a, lot, in a lot of times, we might go for a streak, and we don't have a problem uh, obeying. We're doing this right, and we're doing the good. I guess we get all confident and caught up in ourselves. This is going good. I'm, I'm serving God. I'm doing right by the God. I'm reading like I'm supposed to. But I don't, get, I don't know if you ever really read like you're supposed to. But you, you think you're doing pretty good. But, but something always creeps up in there and, 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 and steals it, takes it away. You know, we go, you go, we go through streaks where we have no problems obeying God, but, um, but we always tend to mess up. And Romans 7, 15 pretty much says that. Um, for, that which we, for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. We're always in that battle right there of doing something we ain't supposed to do and hate. When we do it, we hate when we do it, but we do it anyway. It's just, I mean, like the pastor like to say, what, we, what psychopaths or Whatever he like to call it, call it all the time. Well, Pastor had a word for it. Anyway, um, hey, but you know, I guess, I guess Moses had a right to be, it's all right to be angry. He had a right to be angry, but the idea is not to sin. Hey, the idea was not to smoke that rock two times. Hey, the idea is not to show them folks that, uh, that we're going to beat on Christ, that he got to die again. The idea is, uh, is, is, is that, uh, be angry and sin not. Although the water came out of the rock, don't mean that they was right to smite the rock. God, water, the water came out of it, but that don't make them don't make make it right. For what happened? I mean, God still can bless no matter in our failures. And you know, I was when I was doing it, teaching that class that, you know, for, for the prison. Um, some guys they put some wires together, and the thing would work, 
but it still ain't right. You know what I mean? If you touch something, you liable to get the mess knocked out of you. You know what I mean? Halfway, halfway, half right ain't still ain't right. It still ain't right. Hey, God, like I mentioned earlier, God, he's, he's seeking perfection. He wants us to do everything right, the right way. We mess up. We make the excuse that we mess up, but God's still looking for us to do it. Hey, we got a, we got a Holy Spirit. We got a, a, we born, uh, born of the Spirit. Hey, we got Jesus Christ. Uh, I guess we, we can say we without excuse. Um, slight disobedience is still disobedience. Sometimes, <clears throat> something else about um, unbelief with Moses. You no, know, and basically that's what it comes down to. Moses just didn't. In some way, he didn't believe God, and that's where we play, fail a lot of times because we just ain't believing God. We ain't believing God. We really don't obey, don't obey God. Um, something else about uh, unbelief of Moses <clears throat> in the scripture, and this also applies to us. Um, it, was, it, it seemed like it was, it was too simple just to, just to smoke the rock. You know, sometimes what God asks us to do, it just seems like, well, I, I got the I got to put my effort into this thing. I mean, just like some people with salvation, some people think I get, they got to add something. They got to put their effort into that thing. You know, when we put our effort into this thing, we, we will mess it up. We will, hey, I put my effort in, I put, if I put my effort in, I'm going to, I'm going to, I tear it up by myself without anything. But I'll tear something up if I put my effort in. And that's what, and basically, that's what, and that's what'll happen. Um, you know, he, he might have thought he looked like a fool talking to the rock. Uh, you know, God told him to, to spite it the first time. This time, I'm going to I'm gonna talk to it. Hey, you ain't trusting God. Don't ain't doing what God said said do about it. It might look like a fool talking to the rock. Uh, to the world, obeying God looks foolishness. Looks foolish. Listening to the foolishness of the preacher. I think Buck Richard was just saying something about it earlier before church started. Um, people think that we a bunch of lunatics sitting in here listening to something we can't see. Hey. We can't see, and sometimes we can't touch him. But I can tell you what: sometimes I can show feeling, huh? Hey, that that feel, that, I can feel it. And then you don't want to think it's emotional, but sometimes I can, you can feel it. Hey, sometimes just come here and seeing y'all smiling faces. Hey, it makes me feel good. Um, I mean, but I, you know, the world, the world look at us as, as fools, you know, for what we do, what we believe. Um, but I, I mean. I thought we were fools for Christ's sake. I thought we were supposed to be like because of Christ. I thought the world was supposed to look at it, look at us like that because of Christ. <clears throat> you know, Moses thought Moses thought, hey, uh, well, smiting the rock, smoke worked the first time. We just smite it again. I mean, we got a, God's versatile. He ain't got to do it the same way every time. And you know, and, and in this case, it was important. They might not have understood the rock. He is the, as a male and being a type of Christ, but we understand it. We understand it. Hey, God knew what He meant. He meant by it. I mean, they might not have understood it, but if it did right, but if it did the way God said to, that has been right, whether they understood it or not. <clears throat> hey, all God wants us to do is to trust Him. You know, and just like you, you look at the story about Naaman. Naaman, Naaman said, uh, ain't all the, what, all the waters of Damascus better than this little old, you know, Jordan thought of being a kind of nasty, muddy river, river all the time. He said, ain't, ain't all the, you know, this, this is how we, we look at it and, and uh, put our thought in it, just like, just like Naaman did. Hey, we got some mighty rivers over in Damascus, and all I got to do is, you want me to go in this one right here, this little dirty Jordan River? It's just, just, it's just something as simple as that. All he had to do was go on and do it like the little lady, little girl said, do go on and then get in that water and you be healed. He, I don't know how long he went without without his healing, but he'd have been a healer a lot sooner. Hey, there's a lot of things we deal with. We've been, out, we'd avoid problems a lot sooner if we'd have just done the way God said do it. Amen. A lot sooner if we'd have just done the way He said do it. Um, the, you know, the problem is that you know we just we just don't take take heed to what the Bible says. We as 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 fine as I think y'all are. I think y'all are good folks. Y'all mess up. Y'all still mess up. I look at Brother Nolan, he's just as calm and quiet, and, but he messes up. Hey, and, I'm, and I'm just calm and pretty quiet most of the time, but I mess up all the time. Hey, we mess, we mess up. Yeah, 
you know, um, you know that it was it was a simple thing for him to just to speak to the rock. It's a simple thing for Naaman just to just to uh, get into Jordan River. You know, it's just like salvation. It's simple. Just accept that right there. We we make we, we make salvation hard. You mean if you if a person not saved before I got saved, I made salvation hard. I frustrated the gospel of Christ. I made it hard. But once I got saved, I said, man, this that's all it was to it. I, wish I, I bet I bet Naaman said the same thing when he got healed of that leprosy. I bet he said the same thing. That's all I had to do. Moses is probably thinking the same thing. That's all I had to do was speak to the rock. <clears throat> Another problem with Moses, um, what Moses did was, was that he did, uh, he did it in the eyes of the children of Israel. In verse, in verse 10, I think I mentioned some of this a little, little bit earlier. Verse 10 and 12 says, 10 through, 10 through 12 says, And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock, and he said unto them, Hear now, ye, re ye rebels, um, must refetch you water out of the rock. And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice, and the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beasts also. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, because ye believed me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore ye shall not bring this congregation to the land which I have given you. Hey, he, um, like I say, uh, that that congregation was gathered. That congregation was sitting right there, all eyes on Moses and Aaron. Everybody sitting right there looking at him, and all all of them was had to, we got to have. They thirsty. They want something to drink, and the beasts want something to drink. Um, and they 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 need it. I mean, water water is sustains you. You got to have some water. And they're out in a, in a in in some desert areas, and they and they yeah, and they they thirsty, and they looking at Moses to to to, to give them water, and Moses smites the rock, he smoked the rock instead of just speaking to him. Hey, the the thing is that everybody's looking at him to do right. Everybody's looking at hey, we we looking at the pastor to do right. We are looking at brother James to do right, brother Tim, John, Jeff. Hey. We, Oh, the youngins are looking at y'all, looking at us to do right. I mean, the, the, the little girls are looking at the grown ladies to do right. I mean, that's where they were looking at Moses. Moses, you can't, you can't mess up. Hey, Moses, he could, um, that, that's, that's what the elders in the church for. They're for everybody else to look up to, to be like. Sometimes I find myself talking like Brother James, look, looking up to the elders in the church. You know what I mean? I hate to say I'm copying, but something ain't. I mean, you go and model yourself, model off somebody doing right, huh? Um, hey, you know, don't don't cause the children to stumble, and that's what'll happen if you if you mess up. You causing the them little ones. There's some scripture about that because you cause the little ones to mess up. Another point. Mo, hey, Moses didn't didn't want to be seen as a servant. In verse 10, it says, "And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock, and he said unto them." Here now, ye rebels, uh, must we fetch you water out of this rock? Hey, when you think about fetching, you think about a servant. I got a German short hat pointer. I love the dog. And he's my servant. When we go hunting, he's my servant. I say, if I shoot a bird, I say, fetch. He go get it and bring it back to me. I say, yeah, you good servant, dog. <laughs> uh, hey, hey, you good servant. Hey, but that's, but, but that's what, about what, what happened. Moses, hey, Moses, like, I... Am I your servant? You want me to go fetch this water? Yeah, Moses, that's what you're supposed to be doing. Um, you know, um, there are other. Pro you know that the, there are other that our problems most of the time are never. We never want to be seen as a servant. That's a hard thing for us to get our head around sometimes as a servant, because uh, we you know when you think of servant, you think of a, a lowly person, a, uh, somebody that's just a little bit beneath you, beneath you. Um, the, but the idea is to is that God gets glory out of this thing right here. We keep we keep forgetting that God's supposed to get glory out of our lives. We f we keep forgetting that um, we're supposed to honor God. We keep forgetting that uh, He's the one that's supposed to be on the pedestal, not us. You no, know, everybody everybody 
Everybody, I, I don't want to say this because we got a pretty good church here, but I'm going to say it in general because you know, generally churches are like this. We got, everybody wants to be the pastor. Everybody wants to be the pastor. Everybody wants to be the deacon. I'm the deacon. Hey, some of the church, the church I come up from home, everybody wanted, everybody wanted to be the deacon. But did, none of them know what a deacon was. <laughs> they didn't know biblically. They didn't understand what a deacon was all about. If they understood biblically what a deacon was, we wouldn't none of them want it because they'd be a servant. With none of them on it, but you know, but but we all, but um, everybody wants that. Uh, we want to be somebody, but hey, but even a deacon is a servant. A pastor is a servant. They even serve. Hey, I'm a servant. I ain't a pastor, but I'm a, I'm a servant. I'm a still a servant. Um, hey, God, a servant. Hey, God, God sees you when you when you're cleaning the toilet and picking up trash. You know, that's kind of what servants do. Hey, God sees you when you do it. Hey, God sees you doing the best to to cook for the church. Out here, we have dinners and stuff. God sees you doing that. Hey, God sees you when you ain't cooking, when you ain't being a servant. He sees you when you're doing it, when you see you when you ain't doing it. Um, God, hey, God, see you, see you. And not, to, not to pat myself on the back, but I remember when I first, we first, hope we first come, when I first got saved. Uh, that was my thing. Was the that was right out there was, Pastor cut, he cut my job out. He cut my servantship out because it was all it was was pine pine cones out. Pine trees out there, and that yard was full of pine cones. I was kind of glad he took that servant ship away from me, because I, yeah, because that was my thing. I go out there and pick up pine cones. They need to be picked. I, that was my thing. First, get saved, and you got zeal, want to do something, so you go out there and pick up pine cones, and that's what I did. But um, but God sees all the little, all the little stuff, and God, God sees you using your your trade around the church. He sees all that stuff. Hey, ain't nothing, ain't nothing wrong with being a servant, but Moses. It seemed like when, just from looking at that right there, Moses might have had a little problem with that at the time. Even though Moses was a great man, he knew he was serving God. Hey, this was a chance he had to mess up, and he, and he took that chance to mess up. Hey, God sees you offering prayer requests for others. That's, that's what servants do. Hey, when we meet him on, 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 on Wednesday night, hey, I hope I can say this without hurting anybody's feeling, but when it's kind of slim in here, we kind of get discouraged. But when there's a lot of people in here, we like it. You know what I mean? We kind of like to see a lot of people in here apparently. But hey, uh, but um, but being but praying is is, is is serving. Nobody who can see you praying. Who when you? I ain't talking about so much right here. But who sees you praying at home? Don't nobody know you praying at home but God, and God's the one you want to impress anyway. You got to yeah, so you got to you got to impress th impress God with, with things that impress God. That's the kind of stuff that impresses God. Praying. Um, God sees you witnessing. I don't see y'all witnessing, but I see. You're putting tracks in your pocket a lot of times, but you got to impress God with things that impress God. That's what impresses God, witnesses and praying. Um, God sees, sees you living your life, you living living right, or he sees you living wrong. But living right is what impresses God. Hey, like I said earlier, we got to impress God with things that impress God. That's what impresses him. That's how he gets the glory out of this right here. He ain't, he ain't got nobody else to... Prove nothing to but himself, huh? He it's just him, but that's what he wants. You know, although although Moses was wrong, God didn't let the others. And this might not mean a whole lot, but I just something I gather out of it, out of it. Uh, although Moses uh, Moses was wrong, God didn't let the others suffer because of him. He didn't just withhold the water back because Moses did it wrong. You know, God still God. Hey, we, 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 uh, God still God. And God, when we say God is good, I'm, I ain't no doubt in my mind. At this time in these folks' life, God was good. Moses might have messed up, but God gave us a blessing. We needed that water right there. Um, hey, Moses, Moses couldn't enter into the land because of unbelief. Because ye believe me, because ye believe me not, you get to wander through the wilderness for forty years. Or because you don't didn't believe me, they, they, they didn't believe him. Um, because ye believe me not, you didn't you don't you don't. When I didn't discipline my youngins the way I was supposed to, I didn't really believe God the way I was supposed to, because I didn't believe him. When you when um, because ye believe me not, hey, you don't take you don't take sowing and reaping that seriously. But God says if you, that what you sow, you shall also weep, reap. Uh, 
if we took it seriously, we probably wouldn't sow some of the things that we sow. Because we don't, we don't believe God the way we say we believe God. And um, know, it might be a little dry tonight, like y'all, but you know, all, all this. In first, in Second uh, Corinthians six two, he says, "Um, for he saith, I have heard thee in the time accepted, and in the days of salvation have I secured thee." Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Um, be, if you, because you believe me not, that wouldn't, that really don't matter. If you don't, you don't believe God, that really might not matter. Because the, the day, if you lost today, is the day of salvation. But if you don't believe him, it really don't matter. It really don't matter. The thing is, God wants us to believe on him, to believe on him. I hope I phrased that right. Um, I got my point across on that. If you, believe, if you believe on Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and the resurrection, thou shalt be saved. You, there ain't no other way around it. That's just what's going to happen. The problem is folks don't believe on him. Folks don't, because they, because folks believe not. If they can get that believe not out of them and believe, folks will be saved. They could, they, they'd have eternity in, hell, in heaven. Um, but because ye believe me not, there is, a, there is a hell and then there is a lake of fire. All because you believe not. That believing not is a, is a terrible thing. All God, hey, there's a, the whole New Testament is basically based on Believing in Jesus Christ. It ain't so it ain't saying like knowing, but all God says all you got is it's just as simple as believing on him. The, the Moses, the children of Israel, us, me, a lot of my problems would be avoided if I just believe God. That's all I got for Wednesday night Bible study, I reckon y'all. Um, but hey, the, the thing is to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. And I don't, know, I don't know who's saved here or not, but, I mean, you always, I mean, I remember, that was a long time when I had to, uh, it, was, it was often when I checked up on my salvation. I mean, maybe because I was doing wrong or whatever. I say, Lord, if, if I ain't got it, Lord, I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe that you, were, that you um, rose again. I believe, I believe you died, you were buried, you rose again. And uh, I believe all that stuff in the Bible that says that you were poked in the side, with the, with the, and uh, that your blood came out, water and blood came out. I believe all that stuff about you, God. Hey, if, if for some reason I ain't got it, would you save my soul? Hey, sometimes, and I hadn't, 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 hadn't had to do that in a long time, but it ain't nothing wrong with it. I was talking to a guy just today. I said, hey, man, ain't nothing wrong with checking up on your salvation. Hey, but it's, it's something about Christians kind of understand that, but the world don't understand it. Anyway, um, that's it for this evening, y'all. Have a good week.